Running is the most prevalent sport in the world, and it has been going on the longest. However, around 80% of runners do encounter some sort of injury in their career. But recently there's been talk about a new form of running that could prevent injuries. This could be the answer that a lot of runners have been searching for. Humans have been running for more than two million years, and uh, most of that time we've been running barefoot. Um, the modern run running shoe wasn't even invented until the mid-1970s. People have this idea nowadays that all you need to run, um, all you need to run is a pair of shoes. And uh, when really that's, that's quite not true. Um, in reality, all you need is your feet. The foot has been, has been evolving um, a lot over the years, and we think at first it evolved uh, to walk and to climb trees, but about two million years ago, uh, the foot evolved for running because there was a big uh, environmental change in Africa and animals were starting to come out onto the savanna, like big uh, quadrupeds, um, like gazelles and stuff like that. And so humans developed this way of hunting that's called persistence hunting where you jog, you chase an animal at a speed that makes it gallop and if you can get it to gallop for like about 15 minutes in heat um, you can get it so it's panting and quadrupeds cannot gallop and pant at the same time so if you can do this for around 15 or 20 minutes then the animal will collapse and you've got dinner so since two million years ago, we've seen many evolutions in the running shoe, like Bill Bowerman's waffle shoes, the typical running shoes of the 1970s, interesting shoes like these that American public think will change their running lives forever, and finally, barefoot running shoes. So there are actually many downfalls to uh, barefoot running. One is the obvious, like, surface injuries. Um, like since you have no protection on your foot, you could land on glass or ice, or if it's cold outside, it's uncomfortable to run without shoes. So that's one downfall to barefoot running. The other is you can actually get injured. Um, one of the most common ways to get injured is by doing too much too fast. Well, most people, when they hear about this barefoot running thing, they're like, they like, they take off their shoes and they go on for a run like it's some magical thing that happens overnight, but it doesn't work that way. Um, like anything, change takes a long time, and so there's this rule that a lot of people use that's called the 10% rule, where you only increase um, change in your running routine by 10% each week. So this would mean that if you want to try barefoot running, you do it for one hour for two to three days, two hours for the next two to three days, and then increase by 10% for the next week. And so this is the one way to successfully make the transition from shod running to barefoot running. Um, failing to do this can result in many injuries such as a rigid midfoot, uh, peripheral ar arterial disease, peripheral neuropathy, and many other bad things. Uh, most of which of these injuries are regarding the arch of your foot just because it's taking so much of the shock that it was used to um, not doing. So it's just a big shock for the foot. So there are many bad things that can happen from barefoot running. So recently there was a book published by Christopher McDougall called Born to Run. And one of the main things that this book has done is it started a debate about barefoot running. And it's got scientists thinking about, well, maybe barefoot running is better for you. And as you can see here, it's clearly, it's scientifically proven that barefoot or forefoot running it, uh, reduces the impact force on a body tremendously. So when we see how runners land, you can see this big impact transient, um, this big spike in force that, that puts a lot of force up the runner's body and can cause tons of injuries. And on the other hand, when we look at a forefoot striker, that impact transient is not there. It's a nice smooth hump because the, their foot is absorbing most of the shock. And so there's no impact transient and there isn't that huge spike in energy going into their body. Again, we can see it here 
And again, on the forefoot striking, there's no big spike in energy, and it's much easier on a runner's joints. You can understand the difference with the following very commonplace observation. Imagine dropping the pen onto the ground but falling vertically down. That's like a heel strike where your entire leg strikes the ground and comes to stop and it's a big impact force. On the other hand, if you're a four foot striker, then you can think of it like the pen landing at an oblique angle where it hits the ground and it doesn't come to a dead stop but starts rotating. So not all the energy, kinetic energy of the pen has to be absorbed by the impact. Some of it gets just transferred from moving down to rotation and so the impact forces are much smaller in a four foot strike compared to a heel strike. So after all this you may be asking, uh, so what does this mean? What should I do? Should I barefoot run? Um, is it, is it, do the benefits of it outweigh the harms of injury, possible injury? Um, I, in my opinion, um, I think that some people should do it. Um, barefoot running is not for everyone. Like, just like a lot of things, um, if you have like a unique foot, like if you have a low, a flat foot, a low arch, or a very high arch, this, the chances of injury during the transition period from shod to barefoot running are very high, and if you fall in that category, I would not recommend barefoot running. However, for the people that um, feet are relatively normal and you don't see any harm in it, I think that I would definitely recommend it. Um, however, in order to avoid like surface injuries, I think the real winners after all this research are minimalist shoes. Um, things like this and barefoot sandals or Vibram Five Fingers, I think they accomplish the goal of being able to use all your muscles and barefoot run all the while protecting your foot from mother nature. Um, these shoes are designed, they have a big toe box so your toes can splay out and move. They're very flimsy, you can roll it up into a ball. So it's it's a lot like barefoot running and I think this, something like this, a Merrill barefoot, is the, is the way to go if you want to try barefoot running. So I decided to give this barefoot running thing a shot. And I have to say I've enjoyed myself a lot and I really enjoy this new method of running. Um, and it's a lot of fun too. So I wanted to analyze my stride while I was running in some homemade barefoot sandals. And not only did I see that I was running with a very forefoot strike or midfoot strike as seen here, but I was also only fully loading my leg when it was directly under my center of mass, as seen right here. Um, you could you could would be able to draw a straight line from my toe all the way to my head. This means that I'm not overstriding. Overstriding is when your heel contacts the ground way in front of your center of mass. It is the leading cause of injuries in runners because it accentuates the repetitive stress injuries. Um, it, it increases the impact transient and it often causes runners to heel strike. 